My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today we're talking about squirting, finally. So if you find yourself in a situation where you're with some nice looking woman and you want to impress her and you've had a few drinks and you want to take her back to yours, this is the wrong squirting. <laughs> So, piston squirting or oil squirting, uh, oil jets, um, you may see this on a lot of high performance bikes, this is a four stroke thing, and why do this, how does it work and all the rest of it? Well generally what happens is you have your piston and your con rod and all that rubbish, and then you have your main gallery feed, this is the main gallery feed, it can be there, it can be here in the actual block, it can be wherever you want. And generally off your main gallery you'll see there's a hole and then there's a little oil jet squirter thing with a little thread on and what have you. Sometimes they're crimped at the end, sometimes they have an orifice at the end and blah 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 blah. And what are they used for? Well what they do is they use high pressure from the main gallery and they squirt oil at the bottom of your piston. And why do they do this? Number one, oiling, obviously, because you want to try and oil your um, wrist pin. You want to oil your wrist pin. And uh, sometimes, or a lot of times, you have a con rod, and there is actually an oil gallery that comes all the way up the inside of your con rod and actually does a job of oiling your wrist pin. Um, just having oil everywhere you know this squirts it hits the side of your cylinder walls it can also be used to um, you know, lubricate your cylinder walls and stuff but the main reason why uh, oil squirting is used and just so we don't upset anyone <laughs> uh, the main, main reason why we use oil squirting is actually to remove heat from your piston um, you squirt the underside of your piston uh, and as soon as that oil makes contact with your piston, it absorbs the heat because it's generally cooler than the piston is. And then it falls off, it literally falls off as your piston comes down. When it stops, the oil still has uh, momentum and it just flings off and it flings off and it rains basically down on your crank, which again is not a bad thing, ish. <laughs> there are complications to this system, so that's why there's an entire video about it. So, you have to take into consideration when you're designing an engine what how you actually control this because it's just off your main gallery your main gallery should be at a known pressure um, per rpm so you should know what that pressure is over an rpm range and you think well you just squirt it it'll be fine the problem is is that you can actually make or increase the weight of your piston if you completely cover your piston in oil the piston is going to be heavier and when it comes and like I said before in a previous video the piston doesn't go at 30 meters per second and then stops instantly it actually slows down and gradually stops and then accelerates back up if this piston weighs I don't know let's just say 150 grams you can quite easily add 20 grams uh, not kilograms you dick 150 grams, you can quite easily add 20 grams of oil to the bottom of this piston. And when you accelerate that piston again, that is that in half changing um, the mass of the entire system. Now yes, when you accelerate away a lot of that oil is going to fall off. But the other thing is as well is when you come to the top of your stroke, you've increased the weight of your piston. And when you look at really high performance engines, Formula One, MotoGP, stuff like that, this can actually be cut, this is something, this is the level we're at, this is something you have to consider. You have to consider the viscosity of the oil and the, the stiction characteristics and the surface tension of oil on the bottom of your piston. It's as simple as that. You want it to sit there, take heat and then fall off, that's the other thing. You don't want the oil sitting there stuck to your piston because it's there to absorb the heat and then fall off. Now obviously the up and down motion does this, but when you're going at 10,000, 15,000 uh, 15, RPM, this needs to happen quite quick. The other thing is as well is, um, this is more to do with the V8 boys and all the rest of it, but it is a consideration, is uh, what we call windage. 
So your crank is spinning like a crazy bastard and it's raining oil from the bottom of the piston. It's raining oil onto this piston, onto your crankshaft. And that actually hitting um, the crankshaft does nothing, but it is a resistance. It is a resistance. And at these 15, 16,000 RPM uh, ranges, and when you're trying to make a bike better this year than last year, things like this have to be taken into consideration. The fact of the matter is, is your crankshaft, if you think about it, is like a fat propeller. It is spinning at 15,000 RPM. And in your crankcase, it's a sea, it's a fog of oil. You know, there's oil returning, there's oil being squirted up and there's pistons letting it go and it's turning into all this misty particle stuff. And your crankshaft has to plough through that. Your rods have to pass through, in a sense, which is thicker air. You know, it is, it, it's air and it's thicker because the oil mist is in there. And that actually does cause not real issues, but it's something we have to take into consideration when we design an engine. This is one of the reasons why knife edging exists. Um, just so that the crankshaft throws can basically plough through the air smoother. There's also the eddies and the, um, the wake of the crankshaft itself, especially the conrods. The crankshaft webs aren't so bad if they're full circle, but if they're not, not full circle, then this can again produce a problem. As soon as you start getting flow separation and stuff like that, it creates a lower pressure region, which means there's a pull or an, uh, an opposing force to you spinning. Like I say, for your road bikes, forget it, don't need to worry about it. But for really, really high performance engines and stuff like that, this is one of the reasons why they use DLCs, which is diamond like carbon coatings on the bottom of pistons. They're very good for wear resistance and whatever, but it's also their thermal conductivity and their. Um, how the, how the oil sticks to it, it's stiction. How the oil actually sticks to the bottom of the piston. And how, you know, the de-wetting, how does it get rid of it? Does it flick it off quite well? So that's oil squirters. You might see when you take your cylinder, your pistons out your engine, you might see all these little pipes facing up at you. You go, what the fucking hell are them? That's these little oil squirter jets. This is what they do. And, and this is why they're important. They're there basically to lubricate things, but more, more than not, uh, more but the main reason why they're there is to actually aid in the cooling of the other side of your pistons and obviously it makes sense for high performance engines you're running them faster and faster and faster which means they've got more and more heat more and more waste heat and you need to remove that otherwise the engine is going to start to suffer mechanically and you know the efficiency the efficiency rate and the thermal gradient and so on and so forth, and you get knock and blah 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 blah. So that's what the thought, I hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.